Let's go to work. We got 16 puzzles to do here. Let's go to work, Granny, uh, Granny Riddleton. What's up? What's up, boo? I don't remember her voice. So, here we go. Why? Oh, I remember now. Why, howdy. Do you often... That's, that wasn't it. Do you often... Blah, blah, blah. We don't have to talk to her. I just wanted to be nice. I failed the October update. <laughs> let's go. Let's do Let's do this. We got this. I'm hyped. Let's go. Uh, uh, we need 16 puzzles. Let's start with number 16. Triangles and ink. I don't think we did this one at all. <laughs> you want puzzles? Wait, wait. Boom. 16 more puzzles. <laughs> Triangles and ink. This is 40 pick rats. I don't think we did this one. I don't remember it by name. It doesn't sound familiar. Oh, oh, this going to be fun. This going to be fun. Okay. Here are two shapes. One large and one small. Each is made. What? There are two shapes. I see plenty of shapes. Uh, one large and one small. Each is made up of little triangles. Dipping your fountain pen into the ink one time gives you enough, just enough ink to draw four little triangles as depicted by the shape on the left. Uh, so with that in mind, how many times do you have to dip your pen in the ink in order to draw the shape on the right that's made up of 36 triangles? Is it asking me? Give me a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is it saying... Oh, okay, to draw the triangles. Yeah, that's what it's saying. So when I dip the pen in the ink once, I'm able to draw one, two, let's see. I'm drawing, I'm able to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine lines. I have enough ink to draw nine lines. So let's see. How, can I? Yes. Okay. I can make notes. Oh, thank God I can make notes. Okay. So everything above this line here is one dip. Because obviously that's the same shape there. Let me see. Let's see if I can do this a sensible way instead of what's rattling through my mind right now. This entire triangle is one dip. This triangle here is one dip. This triangle here is one dip. So that's three so far. The middle. Oh, no, it isn't. I was going to say the middle is drawn um, because it's negative space of us drawing these three, but it's not. We still got to get this middle part. So let's see. So we're at three dips, and then this is a third of a dip. So this is, this is three and a third of a dip so far. Let's see. That's three. This is four and a third. If we do this... That's five and a third. And then this would make five and two thirds. Then there's this. That's six and two thirds. And this would be seven. Six and three thirds. It would be seven, uh, seven dips. It would take seven dips to draw these 36 triangles in this shape. I'm going with seven. We're rolling through this. We're rolling. We got puzzles to kill today, baby. <laughs> Luke, here's my answer. Moving, moving, we're moving along. We got 15 to go. Keep it moving. <laughs> Make a rectangle. Puzzle number 12. This is 40 puzzles. Uh, Picarats. We got 15 to go. Oh, this gonna be fun. Oh, this gonna be fun. Here we go. If you, I like, I like shapes. I don't know if you guys realize that. If you want to cut the piece of paper shown in diagram one into two pieces and then reassemble them to form a rectangle all you have to do is cut the paper as shown in diagram two follow however in order to assemble the pieces as shown in diagram two you need to flip one of the pieces over before putting them together where should you cut the paper if you want to turn the paper 
in diagram one into a rectangle without flipping either of the two pieces. Okay, so what we need to make is a five by three rectangle. Five going across, well, not necessarily going across, but five going in one way and three going in another. How do we cut this? I think this is a trick question. How do we cut this so that we can make a five by three triangle? I'm sorry, rectangle. Did I say triangle a bunch? Sorry. Five by three rectangle without flipping the pieces. So the shapes that they end up in are how we're gonna put them together. We're not gonna we're not gonna tessellate it. I feel like when I said this is a trick question, I feel like it is. Because, remember, remember the, the game likes to tell us something and then have us assume everything else. What it's telling us is that we need to cut this thing. What we're assuming, what we're supposed to assume is that we're only making one cut. I see how it can be done as a five by three, but we need two cuts. And the two cuts would be cutting this piece here and then cutting this piece here. The fact that it let me do two different lines lets me know that I think I might be right. You'll finish this puzzle solving madness and you'll forget the concept of tower, plot, dumb, <laughs> progress. Okay, if we cut it this way, what we can do is take this piece that's down here and move this square so that it's up here. Then we have two. That's not right. Hang on. Yes, it is right. Then we have two pieces that are left that would be left here and here we could take this and bring it down here i'm thinking that's it if we're allowed to do two cuts then i think this is it that's the only i think that's the only way we could do it without flipping anything we're rolling we're rolling we're moving there we go no okay so we can't do two cuts ah, i suppose i thought i'm gonna say let's move on from this puzzle I'm going to say let's move on from 12. I don't want to waste. We got we got plenty of puzzles that we can do. I don't want to waste too much time on one puzzle. Let's move on from 12. We'll move on. Yes, we'll solve it later. Card shuffle. It's puzzle number 17. This is 30 pick rats. Okay. Three of the four images shown below are the exact same picture rotated in a variety of ways. Can you figure out the odd one? Oh, yeah. This shouldn't be hard. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't I said that over the course of the entire game? Uh, let's see. D and B are rotated of one another. Yeah. D and B are rotated. B and C is rotated. So that means D and C are also rotated. Is A the one odd one out? Diamond here. The heart would be shaped like that. This would be that way. This would be that way. Wait a second. If I take A, uh, MVM means never mind. It's never mind, uh, Carlos. It's 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 slang for or not slang. It's an abbreviated internet abbreviation for never mind. Let's see. Diamond would be there. The club would be there. That other club would be there. The heart would be there. The spade would be there. <laughs> Did I look at C right? I don't think I looked at C right. No, C is wrong. C is wrong. No, it isn't. Hang on. Let me see. Let me see if I could draw this out. I should I should have just drawn this from the beginning. I don't know why I was trying to play with y'all fools. Let's see. Oh, oh, I see what the problem would be. The problem would be the overlap. It's not the shapes on the card. It's the overlap of the cards. Okay. Okay. Because I started drawing. I was like, hmm, is this card on top or is it on bottom? It's the overlap of the cards. Man, man, Layton, y'all are, are some assholes. Y'all do today. Y'all knew I needed to have 75 puzzles and y'all set out to stump me today. Well, I'm not having it. No, I'm not. So let me draw A. 
Let me draw A, and then we'll see if A matches up with anything. So then the card in the middle on A is the bottom, I'm sorry, is the middle card. It's under the other three. And then the bottom right corner is all the way at the bottom. Because the shapes all match up, if I'm not mistaken. All of the shapes match up with where they should be and how they're, how they're positioned. It's how the cars themselves are positioned that's the problem. And I think it's D. Just looking at it, it I think it's D. Oh, no. D has three cars on top. D has three cars on top. Question is, are they the right ones? It's the diamond, the heart. It's the diamond, the heart, and the club that the diamond is pointing at that should be on top. So, no, D is the odd one out. Take a look right here. It's this diamond, this heart, and this club that are on top. When I say the diamond that the heart, I'm sorry, the club that the diamond is pointing at, I mean this point here. So, it's the diamond, the heart, and the club that the diamond are pointing at that should be on top. You also have that in B, the diamond, the heart, and the club that the diamond is pointing at. You also have that in C, the diamond, the heart, and the club that the diamond is pointing at. You don't have that in D. The diamond, the heart, and the club that the heart is pointing at is on top. D is the one that is odd, odd out. How do I? It's not letting me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I think I've got it. Moving on. Moving on. We got 14 puzzles. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Find the dot. Yes, we tried this one. That's the only way we can start with less pick rats than it's worth. Nope, not playing with this puzzle. Moving on. We'll be back later. <laughs> We're moving on. So 28. Let me put 28 on my, my list. Probably made a Mice and Men reference. 10 pick rats. Oh, we got this, fam. As you can see, what we've got here is some trash in a dustpan made of matchsticks can you move two matchsticks to change the picture so the dustpan is holding the trash sure we can sure we can what we're gonna do is we're gonna take done already this was done already what number are we on we need 13 puzzles how many puzzles do we need now because this was done we're moving this one here and we're moving this one here trash is in the dustpan how many puzzles do we need guys <laughs> Luke, here's my answer I've said so many numbers, I don't even remember how many puzzles we need now. Solved. We're moving on, though, that's for sure. Uh, it's worth 50 puzzles. Uh, pick rats. We definitely haven't done this one yet. Here we go. While walking through a market on vacation, you notice a small stand selling cameras. A camera and case set is selling for $310. The seller tells you that the camera costs $310 dollars more than the case itself and that the case cost the price of the camera price of the set minus the cost of the camera let me say that again because I, I must mouth my way through that one the seller tells you that the camera cost three hundred dollars more than the case itself and that the case cost the price of the set minus the cost of the camera you decide you'd rather wait on buying a camera and opt to just buy the case alone you hand the seller a hundred dollar bill and see his eyes light up. Think fast now. How much change should you be getting back? This game here. I've, I think I've heard a puzzle like this one. I just haven't heard this exact one. Let's see. Okay. It's time to take some notes, boy. All right. Walking through a market on vacation, you notice a small stand selling cameras. The camera and case set is selling for three hundred ten dollars okay so a i'm gonna use a to note a is the the camera a is the camera and that has a set cost we're gonna find that out b is the case and that has a set cost we're gonna find that out a and b together both cost three hundred ten dollars a plus b equals three hundred Ten dollars, excuse me. Three hundred ten dollars. The seller tells you that the camera costs three hundred dollars more than the case itself. The seller tells you that the camera costs three hundred dollars more than the case itself. 
So if A is the camera and B is the case, B plus 300 equals A. That's what we've come to so far. B plus 300 equals A. That's correct so far, right? We got that so far, right? Tells you that the camera costs $300 more than the case itself. And that the case costs the price of the set minus the cost of the camera. The case costs the price of the set minus the cost of the camera. So if you want to buy the case, if you want to buy B, what you would do is you would pay... You'd pay 310 Sorry, let's let's use what it says because it doesn't say it costs 310. It says it costs the price of the case, price of the set. So it would cost A plus B minus the cost of the camera. So it costs A plus B minus A, which makes sense logically because what we're left is B equals B. That's very straightforward. He mo he more or less just said how much does the case cost? The case costs how much the case costs is what he said. You decide you'd rather wait on buying a camera and opt to just buy the case alone. You hand the seller a hundred dollar bill and see his eyes light up. How much change should we expect back? Okay, so we have A plus B equals 300. We have B plus 300 equals A. Okay, so if we take B plus 300 equals A and plug that into A plus B equals 310. What we have is I'm going to put this in chat so you guys can see it because I'm at the point now where where I have all my notes written out. So A equals camera B equals case A plus B equals three hundred ten dollars. I'm just going to say 310. A plus B equals 310. That's saying that the set of the case and the camera, or the camera and the case, I'll say in order. That's saying the set of the camera and the case equals $310. Then we have B plus 300 equals A. B plus 300 equals A. That's saying that if you want to buy... That's saying the seller, that's saying the camera costs $300. Oh, I didn't send it. That's saying the camera costs $300 more than the case itself. So the price of the case plus $300 equals the price of the camera. Yeah. And then we have B equals A plus B plus, oh, I'm sorry, minus A. B equals A plus B minus A, which is logical. Uh, what he's saying there is the case, B, costs the price of the set, A plus B, minus the cost of the camera, A. B equals A plus B minus A. The case costs the price of the set minus the cost of the camera. Okay, so now if we take that second part, B plus 300 equals A, and we plug that into the first part, A plus B equals 310, then what we have is, let's see, I want to plug in for A. So we have B plus 300 plus B equals 310. And I'll put that in chat as well. B plus 300 plus B equals 310. More or less, the person that's doing the purchasing has figured out that if you buy the set, what you've really done is you've paid for the camera and two cases, but you're only getting one case. That's why he's buying the case now and the camera later. Okay, so let's solve that out. 300 plus 2B equals 310. 300 plus 2B equals uh, equals 310. So if we take away 300 from both sides, we have 2B 
Damn it, my pen went out. Oh lord. I'm out of pens. I'm out of pens. Where's my work pen? Did I leave it at work? Here's A pen. All right. Uh, uh, we have 2B equals, if we take 300 from both sides, 300 plus 2B equals 310. And we take 300 from both sides, we have 2B equals 10. So B equals 5. The case costs $5. The case costs $5. He's buying the case now. He hands the seller a $100 bill and his eyes light up. Uh, how much change should we get back? $95. If the case costs $5 and we're paying with a $100 bill, we should expect $95 back. Always, always do your math, ladies and gentlemen. You may save some money. Luke, here's my answer. Bam! Moving on. Moving on. We got 12 puzzles to go. We got 12 puzzles to go, fam. Let's do this. Who woke up today and said, hmm, I wonder Chill has to solve a bunch of puzzles. Or I hope Chill has to solve a bunch of puzzles. Uh, pill prescription. Puzzle number 21. This is worth toward, uh, 30 picarats. My words. The buyer was rich. I mean, if the camera costs 300 more. <laughs> Let's see. He didn't give him a hundred. He paid with a hundred dollar bill, is what he's saying. Okay. I keep dropping my my headphones, my sound check headphones. A man has been prescribed ten pills. Starting today, he must take one pill a day. But because the concentration of the medicine is different in each pill, he must take them in a specific order. Since all the pills look the same, the man has decided to write numbers on each pill to help him remember the order he needs to take them in. How many pills does he have to number if he wants to keep track of the order? Nine of them? Nine of them? Is nine the answer? A man has been prescribed ten pills. Starting today, he must take one pill a day. Can we make notes? Yes. I love when we can make notes. Okay. Uh, starting today, he must take one pill a day, but because the concentration of each pill is of the mess is different in each pill, he must take them in specific order. Since the pills all look the same, the man's decided to write numbers on each pill to help him remember the order he needs to take them in. How many pills does he have to number if he wants to keep track of the order? Nine of them. I'm thinking nine. Uh, he has to know that this is the first pill. He has to know that... No, I'm just going to write regular, like an average human being. He has to know that this is the first. He has to know that this is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. This is the sixth. This is the seventh. This is the eighth. And this is the ninth. Once this is the last pill, he has no option but to take it, so he doesn't have to put anything on it. But up until this last pill, he has to know the order of the pills. So I'm going to say nine. I'm going to say nine. Luke, here's my answer. No? On Professor Ooh. Layton in Miracle Mash, you can make Paris. notes on all the puzzles. Good. What conditions will allow you to get away with labeling fewer than all ten pills? I Didn't I just say? <laughs> Isn't that it? <laughs> Isn't that it? Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Maybe I looked at maybe I looked at things wrong. Maybe this is my fault. Just like every other puzzle we've done. Let's see. Man has been prescribed ten pills. Starting today, he must take one pill a day. But because the concentration of the pill of the medicine is different in each pill, he must take them in a specific order. Since all the pills look the same, the man has decided to write numbers on each pill to help him remember the order he needs to take them in. How many pills does he have to take Have the number if he wants to keep track of the order? And it's not nine. It's not nine. And it's not ten. Eight. Can he get away with numbering eight of them? I think it is eight. I think it is eight. If he's been, if he's at the doctor's office or wherever, 
then they're telling him, hey, you have to take these pills. This is the first one that you need to take. This is they're telling him immediately. He can take that first pill right there. And then he doesn't have to number. He doesn't have to worry about numbering that one. So that's one that he does have to number. And then what I just used. So let's say this is the one that he takes on the spot. Then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then he does have to number this one. Is it eight? Is it eight? There we go. Okay, it's eight. Every puzzle has an answer. I wonder if that was the explanation behind it. Yes, okay. Uh, that's number 23. This is worth 40 picarats. Here we have an eight quart pitcher filled with juice. An empty. F oh, this is fun! Oh, I love this puzzle! It's, uh, it's not done with juice normally, but yeah, I know this one. Uh, we have an eight quart pitcher filled with juice, an empty five quart pitcher, and an empty three quart pitcher. The pitchers are unmarked, and your task is to divide the eight quarts of juice so that both the five quart pitcher and the eight quart pitcher are holding exactly four quarts. This is fun. This is fun. I'm glad this doesn't tell me how many moves we need. Uh, it can be done in at a minimum because I definitely try and do that. Okay, tap, the, uh, touch a pitcher to pick it up, and then touch where you want the liquid to go. This is this is a this is a math puzzle at its finest. Okay, so it's not gonna overfill any any pitcher. We have eight here. This is five, and this is three. We want to make it so that there's four quarts here and four quarts here. Okay, so naturally, if we take eight and pour them into let's take eight and pour them into five so now we have three left in the eight core and we have five here now let's take five I think I did it wrong I think I should have gone eight three it's okay there's plenty of, oh it is keep a track of how many moves damn it so afterwards it's gonna be like guess what chill it took you 700 turns and in fact you could only do it if you could do it at four Let's take five and put it into three. Uh, have you heard of something about the referendum of Catalonia? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I have no idea what that is. Catalonia. Uh, let's take three and pour those back into six. Now we can take the two and pour them here into three. We'll take the six and pour them into five. So now our eight quart has one left. Let's take five and pour it into three. I did it. I did it. I did it already. I wonder if seven was the minimum. I wonder if seven was the minimum. We'll take three and pour that back into eight. It already has one, so now we're at four and four. There we go. I wonder if that was the minimum. I wonder if seven was the minimum. Critical thinking is the key to success. Keep that long enough. Yes! <laughs> Restrack riddle is number 31. It's worth 30 pick rats. The distance three racehorses can run around the racetrack in one minute is listed below. Horse A. Can I make notes? Yes, I can make notes. I can make notes. Uh, horse A can run two laps in one minute. Horse B can run three laps in one minute. Horse C can run four laps in one minute. So C is the fastest. It takes, it takes C the... Excuse me. It takes C the least amount of time to run one lap, is what that's saying. The horses line up at the starting line and start running in the same direction. How many minutes will pass before all three horses line up at the starting line again? Okay, so we're looking for... We're looking... We're not exactly looking for the least common multiple. Not exactly. We're looking for all three of these to line up once again. So if this is the start line, at, at any given point, really, we want them to start at any given point and then line up there again. So we'll just, for the sake of simplicity, we'll say this is the starting line here. Uh, in one minute, sorry, it'll take horse C a fourth of a minute to run one lap. It'll take horse B a third of a minute to run one lap. It'll take horse A half a minute to run one lap. How many minutes will pass before all three line up at the starting line again? So what you would normally do for something like this is least common denominator. Uh, you'd multiply 
so that you get the least common denominator, it would be 12. So 12 minutes. But let's see. Hmm. How to, how to explain this one? How to explain it? Let's clear that because that's a little confusing to, to put in there. In one minute, this has gone around four times. Horse C has gone around four times. Horse B has gone around three times and horse A has gone around two times. So let's see. If this is this is the starting line, half would be right about there. This would be about half. So when horse C has come back around for its first lap, horse A is over here. And horse B is, let's see, it takes a third. Horse B is like over here somewhere. This is like a third. This is two thirds. Horse B would be like over here. It's not 12. I know the number. I'm just trying to explain it because I, I, I don't want, even though I want to kill these puzzles in time, I don't want to fly through these and you guys don't understand or someone watching the VOD doesn't understand it. So let's see. Uh... When horse A finishes the first lap, B, I'm sorry, horse C finishes his first lap, horse A is over here, and B would be, I want to say B would be like somewhere between here and here. Not exactly half, but somewhere between here and here. Horse C finishes its second lap, A is back here, but B is like over here somewhere. Horse C finishes its third lap. A is back over here. And B is here with, with uh, C. So that's three. Now we want to get A back here. Uh, we want to get A back here. If oh, Horse C is on its... Fourth lap, A is back here, but now C is back over between here and here. Between here and here. Uh, C is on its fifth lap, A is over here. C is like between here and here. And then on the sixth lap. Because on C's sixth lap, C is here. B would be finishing its sixth lap. It'd be here. And then A would be finishing its sixth lap. It'll be back over here. I, I I didn't explain that right. C would be on its sixth lap. It would just finish its sixth lap. B would be back with C for the second time. Because two times three. Two times three is six. And then A would be back with C for its third time. Because two times three is six. That's that's the best I can explain it. I know I know the answer. I apologize. I can't explain that one the way I should. Layton's gonna explain it for us because he's an ass. No, no, that's wrong. Oh, I didn't answer the question. I didn't answer the question. After a minute has passed, so after one minute has passed, horse C will be right back here. At the end of every minute, horse C will be back at the starting line because we've already said that. I hate this game. I hate this game so much. And I mean that for the bottom of my heart. How many minutes will pass before all three horses line up at the starting line again? One minute is the answer. One minute is the answer. At the end of every minute, they will complete a lap. One minute is the answer. I hate this game from the bottom of my cold heart. <laughs> I go. hate this game. Another puzzle solved. I hate this game. This is exactly it. In one minute, horse A will have done two laps. Right. Horse B will done have done three laps. And horse C will have done four laps. I hate this game. I hate this game. Tell me it's another one like the juice pictures. Uh, it's number 24. It's worth 50 pick rats. Yes. Yes, it is. 
All right, so I don't know if we need to explain this one, much like uh, we did the other one. On the counter, we have a 10-quart pitcher full of milk, uh, an empty 7-quart, an empty 3-quart. What we want to do is divide the 10 quarts of milk so that both the 10-quart pitcher and the 7-quart pitcher are holding exactly 5 quarts. We got this. I don't think it's the same order. And, of course, it's going to keep track. Leave me alone, Carlos. <laughs> Overcomplicated puzzles since 2017. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh... Let's see. I don't think it's the same amount. I don't think it's the same amount of steps, but we can, we can, we'll try it. Let's see. Uh, we want exactly five pitchers in both the 10 quart and the seven quart. Let's see. So if we empty this here, we'll have three. If we empty the 10 quart into the seven quart, we'll have three left in the three, uh, 10 quart. Then we could take the seven quart, put that in the three quart. We have four left in the seven and three in both the 10 quart and the three quart. We want exactly five in both the, oh, this is even less steps. Oh, no, it's not. The fact that it's white on white is making it super hard for me to see. Oh, I can see like on, on my iPad, fine, but everywhere else it's, it's hard to see like where it's filled up. That didn't change anything. Okay. So what we could do is take the six. I'm sorry, we take the three and pour that back in the ten. That'll give us six. Then what I want to do is take the six and pour that into shoot. I could I wasted a step because I could just put that in the I could just put that in the seven. It's alright. We're not we're not going for the the perfect one today. Let's see, let's put the seven back here. Do I want to put this in here and then this here? So now I can. Oh my God, I'm just wasting time. I'm just wasting time. Let's start over. Okay, let's go this way first. 10 into 3. So we have 7 left here in this. In the. Uh, oh, shoot. Let's see, the other one was an 8, 5, and 3. I don't know why this one's not. Why well, I'm not finding the way on this one. Let's see. In the seven. And now we can take the seven, put that in the three. And then pour this back in the ten. We take take the three and put that in the <laughs> Let's see. If I take this three and pour that into the seven, there's six in the seven. We take the four. There we go. We take the four and pour it there. We get. Let's see. Let's take that and pour that back in the ten. We got six here. Let's pour that in the three, four. I'm really just moving. I'm really just moving milk around. <laughs> I'm really just moving milk around. We want them both to be holding five. Let's see. This here. That there. This here. Seven here. Now we have eight. Okay. We can move this here. Got it. And then that there. And now this goes back there. We definitely yeah, didn't get the minimum. Here's my guess. Definitely didn't get the minimum. Professor, I've solved it. Nine moves. Okay. Yeah, we weren't there. We weren't there. Uh, 20 picarets. Uh, this is number 43. <clears throat> Three identical looking umbrellas are sitting upright in a stand. Assuming the owners don't check the umbrellas labels. What percentage chance is there that only two people will walk off with their own umbrella? Only two. Okay. So we have two scenarios. I'm sorry. We have two variables, I guess I, I want to say. We have A... B and C for the girls. Girl A, girl B, girl C. And we have umbrella A, B, and C for the umbrellas. Uh, we're going to say that girl A owns umbrella A. 
Girl B owns Umbrella B. Girl C owns Umbrella C. What's the percentage chance that only two people walk off with their own umbrellas? Only two. Zero. Zero is the answer to that. It's impossible for only two girls to walk off with the right umbrella because the third would have to walk off with her own umbrella if she grabs one. If girl A grabs her umbrella, then girl B can only choose between B and C. For us to get two, girl B would also have to grab umbrella B, which means C is left with umbrella C. The answer is zero. Nice try, game. Nice try. But after that last bit, you won't get me. You won't get me. Zero percent. Luke, here's my answer. Nice try. Every puzzle has an answer. I'm ready today, boy. Uh, Stamp Stumper, number 44. This is worth 50 picarets. Your friend just got back from the post office where she purchased a sheet of stamps with values ranging from $10, uh, 10 cents to a dollar. First, your friend cut out the dollar stamp and set it aside. Then she divided the re remaining stamps evenly. Sorry. Then she divided the remaining stamps into seven uniquely shaped bunches, each with a total value of one dollar. Can you divide the sheet of stamps the same way your friend did? This is going to be interesting. Let's see. Okay, let's redraw lines. Let's go. Okay, so the rest of these are divided into seven groups that each cost a dollar. Let's start here with this one that cost a dollar. Oh, I have to draw for the outside. Okay. And then we got this one that cost a dollar. Then we have. I don't know if I want to go 20, 50, 30 or 50 or 50, 20, 20, 10. I think this 90 wants this 10 because I can't see another way for this 10 and this 30 to get together with this 10. That's already 50. Oh, it might. It might be able to. It can go. Uh, shoot, this one's hard because it can go 10, 30 for 40, another 10 for 50, another 30 for 80 and then down to this 20 now that I see it hang on let's see I need to play around with that a little bit let's see it was this and this I wonder how many different ways there are to do this one it looks like there could be a few different ways let's go here oh no oh yeah this way so now we have to go this one 30 30 30 okay this is 100 okay there we go that's it one two three four five six seven i wonder i bet there's a bunch of different ways to do this one i bet there's a bunch of different ways there we go no we didn't yes we, no we didn't attempt it we didn't attempt it and we should i go attempt it now we're moving on what was that puzzle with that that was 52 okay 52 let's see next in order would be 55 the odd sandwich the odd sandwich it's worth 20 pick rats using scraps left over from your breakfast you've managed to cobble together a rather oddly shaped sandwich how many times must you cut the sandwich in order to make it fit neatly in the container once once if you make the cut if you make the cut here hang on it's not there it's it's like about halfway here yeah if you make the cut there then the pieces that you cut off can turn over and fit in here it's not there exactly but you know one cut Luke, 
Here's my answer. Moving on. We got five puzzles Another to go. Puzzle solved. We got five puzzles to go. Oh, or you can make that cut there too. This game. This game. We tried this one. It looks like twice. Uh, the Lazy Guard is 56. It's now worth 24 picarettes. Oh, this puzzle. God damn it. Let's go for two. Two, two turns, Bob. There we go. Mm -hmm. Another puzzle solved. Excuse me? Ah, oh, this game. If the security guard takes a path like the one shown above, to the left for you guys, he can finish his patrol of all nine rooms in just two turns. Since the example shows the guard turning right angles to go from room to room, it's easy to assume the solution works the same way, even though that's not the case. We, I, I'm pretty sure we tried every number because I remember saying that the puzzle was messed up. We've tried everything less than what it's showing us. <sighs> this game. Okay, fine, fine. Odd equations. Uh, it's puzzle 64. It's worth 30 pick rats. Here we go. Oh my. It looks like someone has been writing nonsense on the blackboard again. It turns out, though, that under certain conditions, these strange equations are actually correct. 8 minus 6 equals 2. 8 plus 6 always e also equals 2. Assuming the above is true, what does 6 plus 7 equal? How many pick rats was this worth? <laughs> oh, 30. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. 8 minus 6 equals 2. 8 plus 6 also equals 2. I feel like we should blow a hint coin here. In what situation? Let's see. It says under certain conditions. Under what conditions does 8 minus 6 equal 2 and 8 plus 6 equals 2? If we're talking about taking something away, if we're talking about taking something away, then yes, 8 minus 6 equals 2. What situation would 8 plus 6 equal 2? Let me go to the bar next to the park and speak to one guy to get another puzzle. Okay, we can hit there and try. I'm going to blow a hint. This is an interesting puzzle, not going to lie. At first, it might just look like whoever wrote this on the blackboard was terrible at math, but in truth, but the truth is that just about everyone does calculations like these. Heck, you probably do it just about every day. Huh. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thought so. Seven plus six equals one. Can we make notes? We can make notes. Perfect. Six minus two. Six AM minus six I'm sorry, sorry, eight AM minus six AM equals two AM. Six AM uh I should say hours here. Whatever. Eight AM plus six hours equals two PM. Seven AM plus six hours equals 13 a.m. or 1 p.m. Dope. Dope. Luke, here's my answer. Yeah. Every yeah. puzzle has an answer. Every puzzle has an answer except for puzzles number 12, 28, and 52. Those ain't got no answers. And, and nobody can tell me otherwise. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Of course, you can reverse AM and PM and do the same thing. Still find the same solution. Yep. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I solved that one so quickly because as soon as it says, as soon as it said you probably do equations like this every day, the first thing I thought was, hmm, work, time, clocking in and clocking out. That's it exactly. Um, 102 is the last puzzle here that we haven't tried yet. And then after that, we're going to be on the search for puzzles. Aces and the Joker. I believe I said that sounded like an interesting puzzle earlier today. Let's go. 
Oh no, Aces and the Joker, I remember now. That's not an interesting puzzle at all. Let's see. What I want to see, okay, it wants me to put input the answer. It wants me to input the answer. Maybe it's a trick answer and it's not a wild number. Okay. You scattered a deck of 52 cards and one Joker face down on a table so that you don't know where which card which card is where. You don't know which card is where. Next, you start turning the cards over one by one, assuming that you can't flip the same card twice. What are the percentage odds that you will turn over all four aces before you turn over the Joker? I saw your hint earlier, uh, Carlos, about try zero or one. That's why I went to look at the answer and how I wanted me to put it in. A deck of 52 cards and one Joker face down. Uh, assuming you can't flip the same card twice, where are the percentage odds that you will turn over all four aces before you turn over the Joker? I want to get this in one shot. That's why I'm not just immediately putting zero or one. What are the odds that you will turn over all four aces before you turn over the Joker? Zero! The answer is zero! The answer is zero! The answer is zero! When we put the cards down, we flip them over. We can't flip over any card twice, which means we can't flip them back over because we already flipped them. So the odds that we flip over anything before anything else is zero. I hate this game with a burning passion. <laughs> there we go. It's zero. It's not zero. Okay. Okay. Frankly, I'm ashamed. Is it fifty percent? I think it might be fifty. It might be fifty. Let's give it fifty. Because the last one would need to be between an ace and the Joker. Oh. I think that is it. I think that is it. There we go. No? Okay. Uh, Guess what? I suppose I thought wrong. Guess what? We're moving on. Oh, was that the last the last one that we didn't get? Shoot. I think that was the last one we didn't get. Okay. We gotta go find three puzzles. Let's head to the bar. Randy Realton, you ain't got no no spare puzzles running around? Let's see, Percy, do you have a puzzle for us? Let's see. Carlos said it was simple. Was it one? Was it one? Do not be alarmed by my piercing gaze. This is for research purposes only. All right. I'm going back yet. If it was one, if it was one, oh boy, gotta be mad. Where is it? Is it? Let's go. No, it's not one. I don't care. I'm putting one. <laughs> we try. Do we try zero? We ain't try zero. Let's try zero. And then we'll try one. I'm trying it. I'm here now. <laughs> I'm trying it. There we go. This man keeps saying, there we go. Oh, how embarrassing. This man keeps saying, here we go, or there we go. It's making me mad. It's making me mad because it's never going. All right, we're trying one. We're getting that out of the way. We're getting out of the way. There we go. All right, moving on. Let's go find some puzzles. Uh, I suppose I thought wrong. Let's see who doesn't like us. Who? Which one of y'all don't like us and you're withholding puzzles? Oh, does the color mean how many times we messed up? Because I've been noticing the color of the bottles change. I'm slowly falling into madness. No, this is not. No, I've been in madness. Madness has been happened. Madness happened that first time we went to that one. Let's see. Let's talk to per, uh, this guy. Zeke. Or Deke. Let's talk to Deke. Nothing good can be said about that tower. I heard it's all sorts of scary. You should stay away. Yup. 
All right. So you're not going to help us now. Uh, let's go. You said go to the bar. Let's go to the bar. This guy. The yelling man has to have a puzzle for us. Ooh. Rachel, what's up? I mean, appetite. I'm starving. Nope. How about uh, Adele, Adine, Ade 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 Audra, Audra, Audria, Adria? Where's the fun in running around town trying to help other people? Don't you feel so dumb? Okay. The bar. Is this the bar you were talking about? Yeah. Hey! Everybody likes her. I remember people said they liked her. She's cool. Hey, you two. You guys like chess, right? How about it? Want to sit down for a game? Yes. All right. Now we got to start killing these puzzles. We got to start killing these puzzles. Oh, uh, we got three more to go before we can actually enter the tower. Too many queens. Number one. Uh, this is number 80 and it's worth 20 picarats. In chess, the queen can move full length of the board diagonally, vertically, and horizontally. See if you can place four queens on this chess board. There's a catch, though. You must arrange the pieces so that no queen blocks another's line of movement. Good luck. There's an interesting game on the, uh, it's on, uh, what is it? The App Store? Yeah, I just dominate this one. Um... <laughs> Uh, there's an interesting game where you put your arranged chess pieces, and you have to arrange them so that so that each piece can possibly catch another piece, but only one piece. Uh, so, example, you have a, a queen, a bishop, a rook, and a, a knight. You have to arrange them so that they can all capture another piece, but they can all only capture one piece. Uh, I've actually never played that app before. I don't know how I flew th through this one so easily. Uh, chess queen problems like this one have been around for over a century. This is a relatively simple variation of this type of puzzle. Consider it an introduction to the genre. I actually like that idea. It's a really, it's a really nice idea for a puzzle. Very nice. You two are no amateurs. I see. No worry. Next time I'll have an even harder puzzle for you. A stuffed chair that goes in Layton's room. It goes in Layton's room. So I don't care what anyone has to say about it. All right, so we got two more puzzles to go. Let's see. You got another one for us, Flick? Back for another match, eh? I just knew that you two were a bunch of chess fanatics. Nevertheless, this one won't be easy. Even for a pair of chess fiends like you. It's going to mix up pieces now. Watch. It's going to be queens and, and bishops. Too many queens. This one's 40 picarats. All right. Uh, we got to do the same thing. Uh... No queen blocks another one's line of movement. So let's start here. We can then put a piece here or here. Let's go there. And we can put this piece up here. This one here. Well. No? Did I mess up? That should do it. Oh, I heard a thing. I heard a thing. Another puzzle solved. That I messed up. Uh, this one's a bit tougher than the 4x4 version, isn't it? Uh, there's more than one answer for this puzzle. So if you really want to challenge, search for alternate solutions. Yep. And naturally, any of these puzzles, you can flip it vertically or flip it horizontally and have the same solution. Or have a different solution that works. Wowzers. Looks like I'm going to have to think up a harder puzzle if I want to stump you. I can't wait for you two to see my next puzzle. We got a painting scrap. Dope. All right. We need one more and then we can go in the tower. Uh, Carlos, you said maybe we should do the tower next time. What if I extend the stream? What if I extend it? We've been here for two hours, and then we spend relatively short amounts of time doing chapters. Uh, I think we've been able to, when I haven't been clowning around, we've been able to kill two chapters in one stream. So we might have enough time if we could solve this one here to go through the tower, unless you think it's entirely too long. Uh, we, we'd have about... We'd have about an hour, 45 minutes worth of time. If you think that's too long for us to go to the tower, then let me know. But I think we could take it. I think we could take it. <laughs> it's about time you two showed up. So, are you ready for a little chess? All right, Flick. Help us get into the tower, Flick. This one's 60 Picarats. I don't think we've seen a puzzle with 60 yet. I don't think we've seen a puzzle with 60 yet. Uh, let's see. This is the queen. 
Uh, queen can move forward, blah, blah, blah. Let's try something a little different this time. Let's see if you can arrange the three queens on this 5x5 five five chessboard so that no more pieces can be placed on the chessboard. Okay, dope. So we want to arrange these not only so that they don't block each other's line of movement, uh, but we also want to put it so that no other, no other queens can be put on the chessboard. I'm here for it. Okay, this one we're going to play around with a little bit. So this means that nothing goes on this diagonal, nothing goes here, nothing goes here, nothing goes there. That's a lot of pieces. I'm sorry, a lot of squares already blocked off. This further blocks off more. Let's see. I need to move this one already. I see it. Uh, what time is it in my country? It's four. It's four now. I can stream all the way up to about 545, and then I have like a few minutes to get ready for Another stream later today over on twitch.tv slash instant replay live. I'll have just enough time to get ready. Uh, let's see. The only thing that these two aren't blocking off on the bottom row is this square here. This square, anything could be put in that square. So we need to find a way to block that off. And I think it would be here. So this square is blocked. The bottom row can't be touched. This fourth row can't be touched. This third row can't be touched. This second row can't be touched. This first row can't be touched. Okay. So with these three, not only do they not block each other, but no other pieces can be put down. Did it. Luke, here's my answer. Every puzzle has an answer. I'm good at those puzzles. I want to know if there's a way I can play those puzzles like... A lot. <laughs> that might be something we could do on the stream. I enjoy I enjoy those uh those types of puzzles. A lot of people think like that when it comes to playing chess. So like it, it, it kinda helps uh with, with learning to play chess or being better at chess. Some people probably stumbled across this the answer to this when they were working through the five by five chess problem. Yep. Yep, that's the answer, alright. But just wait for the gem I'll have for you ready for you next time. It's going to be so hard, it'll knock your socks right off. Thanks, Flick. The hat rack. Oh, they both have hats. I was going to say, obviously, that goes in Layton's room. Uh, but we're going to put it there. Okay. We now have 75 puzzles solved. We can head to explore the tower. This video was part of a stream. If you want to catch our streams live, make sure you subscribe to AltPlay, as well as turn on notifications and follow at the AltPlay on Twitter. That way you can stay up to date on all changes.